Forgotten Harvest on yesterday, and it was just uh, wonderful. And and I always they always give us tallies of what we do, and uh, we saw more romaine lettuce than we have in our lifetime, <laughs> in our whole entire life. And uh, yesterday we um, did uh, 75 pounds of, of donuts, uh, 4,704 pounds of lettuce. And, 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 and what it translates, they immediately have the computation translated into how many people fed or affected by uh, the amount. And it was it's 5,000. And so we thank him for the impact. Thank you for those that came. It's always a marvelous thing. It's, it's a time of sacrifice, a time of service. And incidentally, we do have a lot of fun when we get together. Uh, so yesterday they were playing a lot of Motown and uh, everybody was plugging in on what their favorite music was and stuff for, for, for those of us that were around during that time. But we had a good time. It was, it was really good. They did the four tops and some everybody else. And, and everybody partial to some group. But it helped us move the letters. Amen. So we thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give yourselves a big hand. I appreciate it. Amen. 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 I told you that your life will be fuller and complete when you serve somebody else. Something has to leave your life. If everything you do is all about you, at the end of you, there will be nothing left. Something has to leave your life in service to somebody else. Amen. And so when we call corporate times of service together, that's a good time. That's not somebody's going to do it. Think about, that's probably me. I need to be a part of that. Amen. And, and so we thank you. Thank you for what you do and the sacrifice. And it was only a few hours. We always set aside four hours and we get done faster than that. We then we take a group. When they send us the picture, we'll make sure uh, that it comes back to church and we or to the mascot for Forgotten Harvest. It is a wonderful facility, and you can do it without us being going as a group. Just go and volunteer. Uh, they always have something to do. Just don't go on on uh, be. They, uh, well, that, that's an interesting occurrence. Shirley said we don't know. You know, it varies, but it. However, it, it's a good time and it's a, it's good service. And, and it'll bless somebody, especially when you get the ending. Amen. All right, all right. Everybody with your Bible in your hand, wherever your Bible is, repeat after me, good voice. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. That's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging, Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all this day calls us to. We thank you for a word you've sent. And we thank you, God, that we have ears to hear, hearts to receive. And we praise you, God, for the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart. And we thank you, God, that you cover us and that you supply seed to sow it. We thank you that you give us bread, both spiritually and naturally. We thank you for what you do for us. And we bless you for it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I want to talk about Receiving what's been sent. Receiving what's been sent. Receiving what's been sent. Until we get down to Easter, each Sunday I'm just going to talk about special teachings and emphasis in the life of Jesus. I think this is the time to really focus in on Jesus. Uh, we hear a lot of stuff about the life that wins and 
lot of stuff and a lot of different subjects. But sometimes we just need to talk about Jesus. It's clearly in Jesus. Amen. So, in the way of introduction, introductions, overcoming victory starts when we recognize what's been sent to deliver us. Because we don't always recognize what's been in Scripture. We have more often than not been given heads up, and and heads up is slang for advance warning. That deliverance is coming. Accepting what's been sent leads to receivership of what's been given. See, sometimes things have been given, but do you receive them? Well, what does receive mean? I have a two-part definition. Receive means to get or be given something. And then part two is to welcome someone or something. All of that applies. You cannot receive unless you welcome the courier or the carrier of the information. You can't receive. In many cases, it's not just what's brought, but the vessel who brings it. Such is the case in our scripture lesson today. Let's turn to Luke 4, 16 through 7. 4, 16. The middle of the passage is very familiar to us, but we're going to just cover the whole scope of the thing today. Luke 4, 16 through 27. Everybody good? Y'all still breathing? Everybody all right? All right. Here begins the reading. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Now, the Sabbath day is what day? Saturday. And, and it was custom, meaning that he went to church regularly. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Now before Jesus had given his, his, his resume that was written by Isaiah some 700 years earlier. Continuing the reading, he said to them, after they said, is this not Joseph? Don't talk about that. He said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months. And there was a great famine throughout all the land. But none of them uh, 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 was Elijah sent except to Zarephath 
in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And then he gives him another instance. The protege of, uh, of Elijah was Elisha. And then the Bible says, and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the successor of Elijah, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. There's a whole lot in here we're getting ready to unpack. Before the events of our scripture text, Jesus had recently come from his 40 days of fasting and prayer and being tested. So, so the Bible says at the end of his testing, he moved forward in the power of the Spirit. And, and, and I thought about that. I said, that'll preach all by itself. When you get finished being tested, you move forth more powerfully. But you got to go through the test. Amen. Man, now, now he doesn't send the test because the devil brought the test. But if you can go through the test godly and in a God way, then you'll come out more powerful in the things of God. So the test made him ready for his ministry. And sometimes we want to do stuff without being tested. But you don't want anything untested working on you. You don't want an untested mechanic. I like that commercial. I don't know which one it is. Uh, 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 I can't remember exactly what it is. It might be selling insurance or whatever, where, where, where the doctor has just gotten reinstated and they ask, how good is he? And it, it's like, like uh, uh, he's, he's, he's okay. You know, they, they weren't really sure. He, and he walks in the room and said, I've been reinstated or whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go. No. <laughs> how many of you don't want the doctor to figure it out as he goes? You cut me, oh, which end do you hold the scalpel on, you know? Oh, this thing is blunt. Well, you got the sharp end in the other part of your hand. <laughs> Let me make it worse. Let me bring it up close, because that, that didn't hear. How many you want a dentist don't know what he's doing up in your mouth? First of all, you don't want him there. And to not know what he's doing... I'm scared of dentists whose hands are too big. You know, come on. Okay. Okay. And if they're heavy-handed, it's worse. Or a, 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 or a hygienist. This is not going to hurt you. Well, let me do that to you. You know. But, so, moving on. He had recently come from his 40 days of testing in the world. He passed through the region of Galilee, stopping in Capernaum, where he performed some miracle. He arrived at his hometown, and on Sabbath, the time when everybody goes to the synagogue, he went into the synagogue. And really, he, he, he went as, as a kind of visitor, and they recognized him as a visitor. And, and, and as he got there, and he sat down, they, they said, come on up and read for us, Jesus, and, or say something, because it was the custom that a visitor or somebody new to a synagogue or, or somebody that, that they felt had something to say was invited up to, to either read the scripture or, or to expound upon the scripture. Well, in this case, Jesus was, was asked to read, and, a, and an attendant passed him one of the scroll, and it happened to be the scroll of Isaiah. And, and he opened it, and, and, and not thumbing pages, but he actually unrolled it until it got to the part that was about himself. And he read his own job description. And, and after he read, he passed it to them, and everybody was all excited about Gracious Jesus, oh, wasn't that wonderful? He read so beautifully, and 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 and, and everything was all right. And this is when the stuff got messy. And he said, "And today, this hearing, it, 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 this this reading, this this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing." What? Now, everybody else, just read and sit down. 
you jump up and say, today is fulfilled in your hearing. What? How? What are you saying to us? A lot of things. He said a lot of stuff to you. When was it filled? Today. He said, today, what you've been waiting for all this time is standing right here with you. And they didn't get happy and go to shouting. They got mad. See, because we aren't ready to receive what's sent. In spite of us getting heads up for years, he's coming. He's going to do this. He's going to set the captive free. He's going to set, he's going to restore sight to the blind. He's going to do this, blah, 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 blah. He's going to save his people from his sin. And when he shows up, what? Are y'all out there? The, yeah, the Bible said they were filled with wrath. They weren't just mad. They got, they got fight. They got red hot. I can see them looking for stones then. We're going to have to get this rascal. <laughs> Come on. Are, are y'all there? We're going to have to get him. The passage read was from Isaiah, just note this, 49, 8 through 9, and Isaiah 61, 1, verses 1 and 2. It was very familiar to all of them. But another thing that, that, that made them mad was, 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 was that, that they couldn't get a hold to to, to something that was missing out of it. But I believe that as we look into the scripture, we see the activity of God in that when he does something in the earth, he usually sends advance notice through a prophetic utterance. When what has been prophesied shows up, its appearance is pronounced carrying the trademark of the prophecy. See, whenever God sends a word, he says, this is what it is, then it shows up carrying the marks of what it is. You have to know the marks of what it is. And sometimes when you don't understand, you are confined to looking at the vessel and not what's happening. Oh God, oh God. Sometimes you can't receive it because of who's bringing it. Because you judge them one way or another. If it's Jake's, you can say, oh, ah, bah, oh, man, hallelujah, get ready, get ready. You know, but if your pastor say it, that's just Lucille. And I'm not, I'm not shading Drake. Jake, see, he's a great man of God. But that's how we who and are. We'll buy all the tapes and won't buy nothing at your church. And your pastor prepared dinner every Sunday. He don't bring much dessert, but he brings dinner. Come on, come on. Is, is that good to anybody but me? So how do we see receive in the day of manifestation or appearance? How do we receive? Well, Hebrews 3 and 15 tells us. While it is said today, everybody say today. If you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in rebellion. See, see, when do you need to hear it? Today, for, the, for Jews, they have been prepared through prophecy, be it through utterances or songs for years, what to expect from the Messiah. But here comes the resistance to hearing. Here comes the resistance. It's verse 23. So all bore witness to him. This is why they were still happy. 
and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. But one somebody in the group said, Is this not Joseph's son? 22nd. Is this not Joseph's son? Now they were happy about the read, and then they stopped. What that meant is, you know, they didn't bring Mary up, but they said, this is Joseph's son. They were being shady. Because this was his hometown, so in the hometown, they know what the hometown gossip is. Wink, wink. He was pregnant before they came together. <laughs> you, you know, you were. Uh, 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 all he is is just a little carpenter. He, he, he made my table. That, it ain't nobody but Joseph's son. And, uh, and that's not really his son. Wink, wink. <laughs> they said it's of the Holy Ghost. Where's Mr. Ad? He, he, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> In the midst of them saying how gracious he was. See, people will bless you when they say, but you know I heard <laughs> He, he a good guy, but you know, you know, this is what they, they, <laughs> and instead of them plugging into what's good, we'll say, oh yeah, come on, come on, come on, or what you know about him, what you personally know about him, you go with what, he... ooh, are y'all still going, to... y'all going to stay with me, we know his brothers and sisters.
oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Get ready, people. Get ready. Hallelujah. This is the season of receivership. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't you worry about stuff. Just trust God. This is a time of receivership. My God. Put your hands together. Give them a good break. Give the Lord a good break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God we're still in the grace and not in the vengeance. We're still in the grace, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's receive our gifts for this service.